Job chapter 5. Eliphaz still speaking. This is the grandson of Esau. Call now, if there be any that will answer thee, and to which of the saints wilt thou return? Isn't that interesting? Call now. And when people get in trouble today, Christians, they call upon people to get in their phone. And they don't call upon God. And remember, he's speaking to Job who's been tormented by the devil. Death, loss, medical issues, boils. Job, who are you going to call? Who's going to help you? And notice the saint here is, you don't call a dead saint. And yet the Catholic Church says saints are dead and after a while the Pope will saint them. That's, that's nonsense. If you're going to talk to a dead saint, you're going to do a seance, and that's against the Bible. New and Old Testament. And the thing is, Job hasn't called anybody. He's just sitting there in one day, seven days, seven nights. Ah, frustration, and he starts speaking. And he's not talking to the three men, and possibly four. He's just getting it off his chest. For wrath killeth, killeth the foolish man. And envy, that's the first time envy shows up, slayeth the silly one. Silly's first time, too. Now, you're going to find a lot of the words in Job are going to be the first time. And we're not going to get them all, hopefully. Get the most we can. And there have been errors on the resources I have. But, I don't think Job is wrathful. That's who Eliphaz is talking to, Remember. Job, is he envying? Now well, look at you guys over there. No, that's not what he's saying. You guys are well. I'm doing terrible. Verses 3 through 6. I, Eliphaz, have seen the foolish taken root. True. Remember, a lot of these things are, are true, but not for Job. But suddenly I curse his habitation. All right, there's a foolish guy over there. Look, look at him. He's rooted. He's grounded. Oh, I wish that guy, I wish God sent fire down. That's really great. But then again, you found out in David in the Psalms. Lord God, curse their habitation. Those are against you, against me. Curse them. Burn them, God. And Jesus came with the gospel, and, and the church has the gospel. Love your enemies. If a man hates his brother, he's of the devil. His children. You're talking to a man just buried ten children. His children are far from safety. True. Job's are dead. And they are crushed in the gate. Now the gate is where you went for judgment. It's a place where you went for legal matters. And crushed means you definitely lost your case. You lost it all. There's also another place in 2 Kings 7.20 where there's been a famine in the land. And two lepers go out and say, hey, you know, the enemy's gone and we got all this food, we got all this riches. Come out here, Samaria. Get the food. Stop eating dove's dung. Stop eating ass's head. Come out here, there's food. And an ambassador that was under the king said, yeah, though God opened up the heavens, the windows in heaven. And God says, listen, just because you didn't believe me, you're going to be crushed in the gate. And he was. And Samaria went out and got all the food and they were able to eat. That would happen many, 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 many years after this is written. Job is a pathetic book. Neither is there any to deliver them. I mean... If you're talking about death of the children, there's only one, and that's God and through Jesus Christ. Even the Old Testament, you know, they died in a, in a state of grace. They had to wait for the redemption, had to wait for the finish of the gospel to get out of Abraham's bosom. Whose harvest the hungry eateth up, and taketh it even out of the thorns. So, here's this man, he's foolish, he's just living a wicked life. And people out there stealing from him. 
the robber. That's the first time robber shows up. Swallow it. That's the first time Swallow shows up. Shows up. Up their substance. Now this is the foolish man that Eliphaz is talking about. Direct reference to Job. I don't know. I don't see it. Although affliction, that could be Job. Cometh not forth of the dust. Neither does trouble spring out of the ground. That's 100% correct. Eliphaz is saying, you know what, Job? You're trouble. You're complaining. You're griping. It didn't come from the ground. Misery, troubles, and problems and all that come because man sinned against God. He said, do not take of that tree of the fruit of, not, of, good, of evil and good. Do not eat of that fruit. And man ate of that fruit, and that's where sin came. Don't blame the ground. Don't blame the dust. That's where we come from, mankind. And in Genesis chapter 2, Eliphaz knows that God made man out of the dirt. Well, Job, God did not make us to have troubles and problems. Adam and Eve did. So don't blame God. Uh... If that's Eliphaz's accountment here, let me read two places for you. Job chapter 1. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. In all this Job sinned not with his lips. Job did not blame God. Job did not blame the dirt. Verse 7. In aspects of chapter 3, Yet man is born into trouble as the sparks fly upward. Chapter 3. Oh man, if I had just never been born, I would never have these troubles. I'd never have these problems. Job, every man has problems. Oh, that's really. Thank you very much. That is 100% true. But you're talking about a guy who just had financial law. You're talking about a guy who had family law. You have a guy who has medical laws. That's not the kind of proper words right now. You know, there is a time and place in the book of Ecclesiastes written by Solomon. This is not the place. This is not the time. I would seek unto God. And unto God would I commit my cause. What did Job just do? Seven days and seven nights. Misery, pain, and suffering. Job. I would have taken it to God. I've got down my knees, crossed my hands, thank God, i got so many troubles and problems. Now, we ought to take it to God. But how do you know that Job wasn't speaking to God? He was a man, right? God said, hey man, he's perfect, shoe is evil. He could have been speaking to God out loud. He may not have been... You know, when we read Job chapter 3, he may not have been talking to these men. How do we know he wasn't talking to God? Out loud. And in Job's case, he should have had that silent prayer. He should have gotten a place where no one was around saying, Lord God, we've never been born. i got to listen to these idiots. So you see, sometimes our prayers is, get off alone with God and speak. Listen. I'm all for it. Tell God everything. You're angry? Tell him. You're upset? Tell him. You're not happy? Tell him. But watch the company you're in because they may do more harm than good. Which God, which doeth great things, amen, glory to God, and unsearchable. Amen, glory to God. Marvelous things without number. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. God who giveth rain, amen, Upon the earth, makes it rain on the just and the unjust, and send his waters upon the fields. True. To set up on high those below. That, that's kind of really against nature. You're going to take someone who's low and you're going to lift them up. And that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. And that they're mourning for troubles and problems. And Another aspect here, Elephant, Job, you're trouble, you got problems, God will take care of you. True. 
The same God that controls the rain, He can control you. Verses 12 to 16. He disappointed, that's the only place that time that word shows up, the devices, first time that shows up, of the crafty, first time that shows up. What is Eliphaz talking about? Who has disappointed Job? Except for the enemies that come and have stolen and killed the livestock? Well, God didn't disappoint it because they came and killed and took the animals. And killed the servants. But God is in control and God is able to deliver you. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution and God protects us. Can you imagine if he were taking our protection off us on what would have happened to us if Satan had activity. As we that go out in the public ministries, however public ministry, if Satan would have the chance to kill us, torture us, and yet that is church history fact. So that their hand cannot perform their enterprise the only time that word shows up. And yet God allows certain things to happen. Whatever has happened, Job. Eliphaz gets a roundabout way is God's in control. Absolutely, Job chapter 1, Job chapter 2. Satan, you go get him, but lay your hand off him. Satan, you can go get him, but don't you kill him. A little good light here. Okay, that's good. You imagine if Satan would got what he really wanted? There would be no Job. If there was a third time that the devil came up to, to the Lord and said, well, you know, look at, look at that. He's doing well. He has not cursed. You, you filled him with boil. Lord, Lord, just let me kill him. Then there would be no Job. What would be the next step for Job? Death. That way, Lord, he can't be a perfect man, he can't eschew evil, and he can't praise you if he's dead. And then chapter 3, that, <laughs> oh, I wish I was dead. Well, the, the, the devil would got his way if God gave it to him. Job 1, God allowed the devil to take everything. Job 2, touch his flesh, give him medical ailments. Job chapter 3, Job writes what the devil wanted to do. Think about that. Imagine Job sitting there in chapter 3. Oh, if I could only die. The devil's like, can I get him? Can I? He's asking for it. And God says, no. Nope. You leave him alone. But Lord, he's asking to die. Let me do it. No. All right, fine. I'll bring you fast. <laughs> you feel sorry for Job? He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. That's the first time that shows up, craftiness. Can you imagine what God's going to do for an atheist standing before him at the great white throne judgment? Hi. I got some words for you out of the Bible that you didn't believe. What's that, Lord? Prepare to meet thy God. How you doing? Do you still think that there's no God? Are you so wise to say that I'm not here? That's going to be a day for those that don't believe in God. How about those who have got other gods? Whatever religion of throughout the age. Imagine God standing there saying, Your bull god? Your cow god? Your snake god? Your female god? Your, your male god? Apollo? Bow the knee before me. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. That's taking the crap in their craftiness. Imagine a man that goes up to God is crafty. He makes an idol of wood, stone, or whatever. Can your God hear you? I heard you. Can your God see you? I saw you make that. He may even play it out on some kind of TV screen. Uh, here, look. This is you making it. Hey, by the way, what wood you had left over, you put it in the fireplace to make your meal. Huh? 
How about Jezebel? I gave you I gave you one of the greatest prophets of the whole entire Bible. And what did you want to do? You want to kill him. And he's going to catch, I mean, Jezebel, he gave her a, a bed to repent and she didn't. Don't be caught with God trying to get you back what you're going to sow, what you reap. You ain't going to win. And the counsel of the forward, that means wicked, vile, is carried headlong. That's the first time that shows up, headlong. You're going to lose against God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Not only are you saved from hell, but you are saved from destruction. You are saved for God getting the last word. You are saved that God will not put you, put you in your place. They meet with darkness in the daytime. That's the first time that shows up, daytime. And grope in the noonday as in the night. Grope means, you're, you're, you know, you ever, you ever get up in the middle of the night and try to find the walls and you get to the bathroom or the kitchen? You're somewhere where it's just so dark and you know, you're, you're feeling around. Where's, I don't want to hit my toe against that table. Where's the table? They have no light. They have no eyes. They can't see. But he, God, saveth the poor from the sword, from their mouth, and from their hand of the mighty. God takes care. True. So the poor has hope, and iniquity stoppeth stop her mouth. Behold, Happy is the man whom God corrected. That's the first time correct shows up. Corrected. Alright, Job. God is correcting you. That's a yes and a no. Now later on, Lord willing, we, we finish the book of Job. We're going to find out Job's self-righteous. Now, Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2 is the devil wants to destroy Job. And God's allowing it so Job can repent and get right with God. So a yes and a no. Therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. That is great information. Chastening, that's the first time that shows up. And we find that in Hebrews chapter 12 or 13. As a father corrects his child, so the Lord corrects those that are his. You know what Eliphaz has told us? Job is of God. When Hebrews hasn't even been written yet. It's the devil but God. That's one. The devil moved David. The number Israel. And God moved David. The, new, the number Israel. God will use the devil to spank your hiding. God used Babylon to attack Judah. In Jerusalem. And he calls him his battle axe. Oh. Oh, Belshazzar, you being a bad boy, I'll call the Medes and the Persians in. Thank you. And then I'll call Alexander in to get you guys in control. And then I'll call in Rome to get you. God will use the devil to attack you. He'll give the devil permission to do what God wants to be done. God corrected me. It may be the devil, but yes, maybe God's corrected me. Me. That fine line. That's an absolute truth in verse 17. For he maketh sore out and bindeth up. He woundeth and his hands make hold. Oh, guess who's standing there with sores and boils? Uh, well, what did the Bible say? It said, oh, where is it? Uh, sore boils. So guess who Eliphaz is blaming for those Thor boils? God. In actuality, it's the devil. Be careful to say that God did it. Be careful to say the devil did it. <coughs> Be very careful. And yet, verse 18 is 100% sure. But it could be the devil or it could be you. You go out and do something stupid and you break your arm because you were stupid. <laughs> Not that God came on crack. Verse 19. By the way, God's the healer, verse 18. 
The devil won't heal you. You think the devil's ever going to heal, heal Job? Absolutely not. He would make it worse. You know, if, if you know, the devil's so bad, he would give Job boils, sore boils from head to his toe, and he would say, God, let me have, let me give him some poison ivy on top of it. And let me give him to a nest of mosquitoes. And let me call the flies. The devil has no mercy, no grace. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven, there shall be no evil touch thee. Evil is a result of our sins. Job is in an evil cause. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death. And in war, from the power of the sword. It's punishment, affliction, torment, and injury. Of scourges in verse 21. Thou shalt be hid from scourges of the tongue. Again, that's punishment, affliction, torment, and injury. Eliphaz, you have a scourging tongue right now. And God's allowing you to open your mouth. Later on, he's going to rebuke you. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. Chapter 4. Chapter 4 verse 6. He says. Is not this thy fear? Chapter 3, verse 25. For the thing which I have greatly feared has come upon me. He's mocking Job. You know, Job, in that condition, God will protect you through war. Job's not in a war. You know, you shall not fear. Job has said, what I am, my condition right now, this is what I feared my whole life. I don't need to be afraid of animals. My fear of destruction and ruin has come. And then now you're scourging me. Verse 23. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field. I don't know. And the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know at all. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle, your body, shall be in peace. Excuse me, can I have another pot shirt? I, I, I scummed that one off. I need another pot shirt. I, I got that one off. His body's got sore boils from head to toe. Your body shall be in peace. And now, those things are itchy too. And you're tempted to squeeze them like pimples. And you want to pop them, and you want to get it over with. I've had one boil three different times. Three or four different times. Your body shall be at peace with me. That's ridiculous. But there will be a time when we get the glory, God will give us all what he's speaking about. And there are protection from God in things that happen in the world. I guarantee if people, as far as the, the street ministry we are involved in, if God would allow it to be, we would be tortured or dead for the things I say. God says, no. You can yell at them. You can play that music nice and loud. You can blow your horns. You can insult him all you want, but that's all you're going to do. I'm protecting him. And thou shalt visit thy habitation, and shalt not sin. Go home and not sin. Is he suggesting that the condition Job is in because of sin? Yeah, kind of way it is. Kind of way it is. And thou shalt know also that thy seed, they're dead. All of Job's seed, his children, are dead. What are you talking about? Shall be great. They're dead. And thy offspring, that's the first time that shows up. Dead. As the grass of the earth. 
Grass grows, it spreads out. Job's are dead. We're not up to chapter 6, 7, 8 in the resurrection of Job's children. That has not happened yet. Imagine taking someone who has lost a child, say, oh, your, children, your child is going to grow up good and be... What do you think if somebody would say that? That's cruel. Like someone who's lost their, their arm. You want to arm wrestle? <laughs> no. Can't. Thou shalt come to thy grave in full age. Chapter 42 is true. Like as a shock of corn. That shock is the first time that word shows up. It's the only time that word shows up. You ever shock corn or shoot corn? I even say it. There it is in the Bible. So when you get yelled at in the story because you're shook in the corn, say it's in the Bible. Job chapter 5. Like as shook, shook of corn cometh in his season. Now that's not corn on the cob either. That's wheat and barley. Lo this. We have searched it. I don't know that we are. The mouse in his pocket. So it is. Hear it. And know thou it for thy good. Now, chapter 5, 24 to 27 are promises to Job that actually do happen. It's almost like a prophecy. His children will come back. Now look at Job 42. We'll go ahead. We'll jump ahead. Job 42, verse 12. Let's look at what we just read in chapter 5. Eliphaz is a prophet, but he's wrong. <laughs> but he's right. But he's wrong. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job, verse 12, more than his beginning. Is that what Eliphaz said? And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 she-asses. Where did they come from? Ever ask yourself that question? He had also seven sons and three daughters. There had to be a resurrection. And at the end of the tribulation, there will be a resurrection of the nation of Israel. And he called the name the first Jemima, and the name of the second Kiza, and the name of the third Karen Hapton. And in all the land, no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. What Eliphaz said, after this, Job lived 140 years. After this, after, not 140 years, after 140 years, and saw his sons and his sons' sons, great great grandchildren, even four generations. So Job died being old and full of days. Exactly what Eliphaz said. Now you gotta ask yourself one question. Nowhere in the book of Job does it say those boils went away. Just throwing that out there. I don't know. I don't know if he was healed. 